So next up, we have uh, Professor Arash Zaghi. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay, that's good. Uh, from the University of Connecticut. Um, you know, one of the things is, I'll just do a quick little tidbit here about this group, you know, we've been talking about how do we get research done uh, on bridge preservation uh, actions and activities. And that's why we're very, you know, happy to have Bobby and, and Professor Rosh here today because they can talk to you about what they're doing and how, you know, this can whet your appetite for what we have coming on here later. Uh, Arash is uh, at University of Connecticut, go Huskies, right? Um, his uh, areas of research include uh, novel systems and materials for new construction, uh, for the uh, new construction and for retrofitting of bridges. He has two projects that he's working with CONDOT on uh, for the retrofit and one from the National Science Foundation to develop uh, multi-hazard resistant bridge columns. Uh, he's also invented a smart sliding bearing system that allows measurement and uh, of loads. And let's give Arash a hand and let's see where you're. Thank you for the opportunity uh, for me to present uh, my research on a uh, very similar subject, uh, bridges with corroded and using uh, high strength, ultra high performance concrete or high strength concrete. I would like to thank my colleagues uh, at the University of Connecticut and uh, my former and current PhD students. And also I would like to sincerely thank uh, Connecticut Department of Transportation for supporting and uh, funding this project. This, uh, this group is mostly the advisory, uh, list of the advisory board of phase one of this project. So, uh, Bobby actually saved my life, D did all the <laughs> background information. I'm just uh, I'm gonna uh, throw in some numbers in here. Uh, so we don't need to talk more about leaky joints. Uh, they have proven to be problematic in all over the uh, nation. 15% uh, of bridges that they rated structurally deficient uh, is because of corrosion. And we are spending, I don't know if you know that number or not, $8.3 billion a year to replace and repair bridges that they have corrosion problem. And severity of the corrosion can be to an extent that actually we get some uh, failure at the end. So in response to your question that what if we have a severe section reduction or a hole on, on a beam, so I hope uh, my presentation actually can offer one alternative uh, that we are looking at at the University of Connecticut for those type of bridges. Existing repair method when we have severe corrosion involves uh, rigorous steps. We have to jack up the structure that I learned uh, makes up for 70% of the repair cost, uh, remove uh, corroded material, uh, weld, or bolt new fresh uh, steel uh, plates or uh, shapes. And uh, after that, we can lower the jacks and uh, actually the, the bridge is gonna rest on the, on the new repair. And you can see like an example of a repair at the end uh, done using angles. This repair is extremely time consuming, uh, cost, costly and uh, labor intensive and it may require lane closure and lead paint. I, I don't need to actually explain uh, more about what, what uh, difficulties it may cause if, if it comes to removing lead paint and containing the structure for that. And uh, essentially what we are doing, let's look at it. We are repairing steel with steel. So that corrosion continues to, become, um, to remain a problem after even the repair is done. So uh, we have developed uh, a, a, a kind of methodology for repair of this type of uh, damage uh, that we believe is cost effective. We believe uh, actually is very, 
easy to implement and uh, can be done during a weekend, as I will explain. In here, I have a quick animation. I hope it works. Just giving you an idea before I start the technical parts. So uh, this is a typical corrosion pattern we see at the end of girders. And uh, this is actually a model off of a, a bridge in New Haven. We shoot studs on the intact portion of uh, web and uh, we cast ultra high performance concrete around on both sides of the web. And that panel actually takes care of the uh, bearing forces that uh, and, and take the load off of actually the, the corroded material. So the research actually is a, uh, is a two phase research. We completed the first phase and we are doing the, we are in the, in the second phase of the project. The first phase was to prove that this repair works in terms of a structural performance. And we performed uh, a few larger scale experiments and also we did preliminary finite element modeling. And uh, it was an honor, 2016, the project won a uh, Suite 16 award, uh, which is called High Value Research, Research Project uh, by Ashto. So that, that uh, validates actually the merit of this, uh, this project. In the second phase, we are looking at full scale plate girder test. I'm talking about 48, uh, 48 inch, uh, 50 inches actually deep uh, plate girders. We are gonna study different uh, repair geometries and also at the end, towards the end, uh, we are gonna develop a standard detail and design guide that can be used by DOTs and engineers for this repair. So they don't need to go back to all the finite element modeling. And also we are working with Department of uh, Transportation, Connecticut Department of Transportation to identify a candidate bridge for implementation of this research, uh, this method. So this, this uh, test setup actually is from the first phase. This load frame was designed uh, to be able to apply loads as high as 550 kip. And this is the test beam down here, this is the load ramp, and this end was uh, the actually portion that we uh, tested. For the second phase, we are actually uh, pushing the boundaries of larger scale experimentation. Uh, we have modified this uh, frame to be able to apply loads as high as one million pound, uh, pounds, and uh, in here we added a dynamic uh, it's a pretty expensive device, uh, the dynamic hydraulic actuator to simulate the effect of live load as we are applying the, the repair. So if there's any question, can I do the repair while the bridge is under service, not necessarily like uh, heavy uh, traffic, light traffic, is it possible or not? So we are gonna address that question. Uh, for the first phase, uh, we tested three specimens, and uh, one was intact benchmark uh, roll girder 21 inches deep. Uh, the second one was damage that we introduced corrosion by reducing 70% of the cross section area of the web and also bottom flange. Uh, you can see here, like the portion of the web that was uh, reduced, and also the Flange. And uh, the third sample was specimen was essentially identical with the second one, but we shot some uh, studs on the intact portion and cast ultra high performance concrete around that. And we cleared the top portion if there is diaphragm, although ultra high performance concrete is flowable enough to actually go around, you know, the, the diaphragm, and uh, there is no issue with that. Uh, this shows quickly uh, like how we uh, made the form. Very simple, we used uh, isolation form. We had a plexiglass window in here to see how actually concrete fills. And uh, we simply poured concrete from the top, but it can be easily pumped if there is a complex geometry. 
And ultra high performance, uh, there is a matrix and also high strength fibers. Uh, we use a proprietary uh, mix by Lafarge, and this mix can gain 12 KSI strength in 12 hours. So you indeed can be done uh, with this repair in one day or let's say two days. And as I said, it's uh, very fluible, almost liquid. So uh, one important component of this detail is, uh, is studs. And we needed to carefully study actually studs and it's their behavior. Uh, so just give you an idea of how they are welded. We have a stud gun. We don't need to actually weld individual studs. It's like 20 second per each stud. I mean, it's very quick. They can weld uh, as many as you want in one hour or two hours. Minimal surface preparation. The contractor even said, I can weld on the existing paint. Uh, we can explore that, but uh, just minimal paint removal. And, uh, and this is how the, the final product looks like. So uh, essentially with these studs, we bypass the load uh, or bypass the corroded portion of, uh, of the beam. We transfer uh, shear forces from the web to studs, studs to UHPC panels, which are super strong, and the panels actually bring the force to the bearing. So uh, we, uh, uh, during the second phase, actually, we are uh, studying uh, the effect of different patterns, uh, layouts, and uh, spacing, uh, length of studs, and uh, specifically uh, focused on welding of studs on old steel, because there was some concerns about like weldability of these studs to um, like A7, which is typically the material for, from like 50s, 60s. Uh, we were given some uh, floor beams from Q-Bridge. I don't think that exists anymore. Uh, and uh, we had some issues with cleaning the lead paint and uh, ultimately we, we, we were able to kind of uh, uh, clean the uh, beams and we are using pieces of that actually to test our stud capacities. And here you can see uh, like a, a, row of, a column of four studs. This is the specimen before concrete is cast. This is the kind of uh, the form. And here you can see the specimen in the load frame. So we apply the load from the top on the steel beam and the concrete cast is sitting on a spherical bearing. So it actually shears off those studs. And this is the way they fail, as opposed to studs in reinforced con traditional reinforced concrete that it's a combination of uh, bending of the stud and crushing of concrete. In ultra high performance concrete, essentially they sh shear off and they give us a very large capacity and also surprisingly large ductility. So we didn't have so far any issue with the weld breaking off. Uh, and you can see in here uh, the uh, sample force displacement curve. And our capacity is comparable with uh, the equations that uh, are proposed by a group of researchers in Japan and some researchers in US. And they are definitely larger than what Ashto predicts for reinforced concrete, even if you use a very high, large F prime sub C. And uh, Eurocode also under predicts uh, the capacity. So here is how uh, it, this, this figure shows how uh, the three samples, the three beams failed. Uh, the intact one, it failed. Uh, by the way, it's whitewashed for us to be able to see yielding on, on, on steel. We use lime um, kind of uh, uh, solution to be able to uh, kind of detect any yielding. It flakes off. Uh, you can see the global buckling of <coughs> steel web. For the beam with uh, reduced section, all the uh, damage was localized at, at the portion that we had uh, reduced the sh uh, section. 
and this is the repaired one. These are UHBC casts. These are like the two sides of the, of the specimen. And uh, we actually were not able to fail it, not because of the capacity of the load frame, because uh, we reached the moment capacity or flexural capacity of the beam. So essentially, it's good for capacity design because it can utilize the entire you know, flexural capacity of, of the beam and uh, uh, take the uh, shear or bearing failure of the picture. And you can see like in here, it's very comparable, what, what we observed is very comparable with what you see on site if you have extensive uh, section reduction. These are sample load displacement curves. Uh, the blue one is the benchmark. This sharp drop is because of buckling. And for the sample with 70% corroded uh, section reduction, we got 75% reduction in capacity. The, the, the green one is showing that. And uh, the red one is actually the repaired one. And you can see this plateau is actually because of the flexural yielding of the beam. And we gained like, uh, we even like uh, went 25% over the capacity of uh, the intact beam. And uh, on the right, you can see the distribution of strains along the height of the bridge at the girder. And uh, the blue one is, uh, again, intact. And the green one, you can see all the strain was concentrated at the bottom. And the red one is the important one here. That shows after, the, after we apply the uh, repair, that concrete cast takes off all the uh, stress uh, off of actually the web and the force is carried by, by concrete, essentially. So if the, uh, one of the questions probably uh, will be, what if corrosion continues to, uh, uh, continues actually after, after we apply the research, uh, uh, we apply the reaper, uh, let it happen. I mean, because we have taken out all the uh, uh, forces uh, from, from that portion. Uh, we followed up uh, with some finite element simulations. Uh, we got very good agreement between our uh, experimental results and also finite element modeling. We use Elastina. And uh, you can see in here global buckling. I mean, it, I, almost identical uh, failure pattern. And um, we developed modeling strat uh, methodologies for uh, repaired and dam. Uh, just a steel beam. And uh, this, this quick animation shows, for example, uh, how stresses are developed and buckling happens, and then all the deformations are localized in that region of the beam. So this finite element actually, they allow us to evaluate the in situ actually capacity of a beam with certain level of corrosion and also see the, uh, evaluate the effectiveness of our repair. These are comparisons of the uh, finite element results and experimental results. The blue ones are from experiment. The red ones are from finite element. Does a fantastic job, actually. And I, believe me, I didn't manipulate this <laughs> data. Uh, LS is is very capable. So um, this one uh, is a sample design uh, for, for this repair. We yet need to improve it, but this is out of like uh, uh, the, the results we got from phase one. And that shows kind of the philosophy that we followed. In here, we, uh, we, we explored like three different uh, design forces. One is based on the existing capacity, shear capacity or bearing capacity from Ashton's equations. So we try to kind of uh, provide enough number of studs to uh, kind of uh, provide that capacity, which is like very over, uh, pr uh, very conservative. And with that, we can get the number of studs that we need for, th for the beam. Also, we uh, try to see, for example, how many studs we need based on fatigue calculation of ASHTO. And what if you want to use strength one load combination. And you can see capacity design gives the highest uh, number of studs, but you don't need that. I mean, that's essentially the full capacity of a beam. Uh, and we don't, uh, even in the original design, we, we don't uh, uh, design for that force. 
and that this shows like how standard de uh, standard detail uh, looks like. It is a very complicated geometry. We intentionally picked that. It's a uh, real bridge uh, detail from New Haven. Uh, highly skewed, complicated, and uh, just we wanted to see like in terms of feasibility uh, if we can accommodate that number of studs and how it's going to look like. So you can see like the studs that are welded. We cleared the corroded part based on the uh, that we got from uh, inspection reports. And um, that shows the concrete cast. So essentially, you form a concrete column, very strong concrete column at the end that takes care of transfer of bearing forces to, to the bearing. The upcoming experimental results, uh, uh, experimental work, uh, we can see, uh, you can see in here uh, the plate girder that we will be testing. Uh, we came up with this idea of actually replacing just the end panel, the test panel, and reusing the tail because essentially that remains elastic. And uh, we hope that we can see uh, the effect of repa effectiveness of repair uh, for different levels of corrosion and also different possible patterns of like, for example, full panel cast or just a column. So I think I forgot to include the conclusion <laughs> because, but um, I leave it up to you guys. <laughs> I don't know if you have time for questions. I think for a lot of our section loss on beam ends, one of the critical areas is the necking down of the bottom flange right at the bearing. Is this uh, a good repair for where, where we might see a fatigue crack start to form because of the thinness of the, of the bottom flange and start I, to uh, Let's put it this way. If you have a good enough meat to shoot studs on somewhere like maybe adjacent to the, uh, to the edges of the flange, uh, yes, this repair works. Because it essentially uh, 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 covers the entire area and takes out all the forces actually from the existing uh, uh, damaged material. Are there any concerns with where you end the section of the repair section now causing like fatigue since you've kind of changed, you've really stiffened the end of the girder up and now almost like a that's cover plate situation? A, that's a good question. Uh, the, the panel is not going to be fully in touch uh, with with the girder itself, uh, with the web, steel web, so the, the me it's mechanically connected through studs. And there's extensive testing on fatigue uh, resistance of studs. And when we design based on fatigue equations, you essentially control for that. Before you do the installation, what type of surface prep do you do? So removing loose material, um, Bobby, thank you. For, I don't know. So uh, removing uh, loose material using one of the methods that like uh, they typically traditionally used, uh, removing the rust. You don't need to remove the lead paint or paint, existing paint. You can just barely shave the location of uh, studs and use a vacuum if it is lead paint, if there are concerns about like releasing that in the environment. So uh, I would say minimal surface prep, minimal surface prep. Is there any gap between the concrete and the steel? No, it's, got, uh, it's essentially like liquid. It's going to just go form around it, and uh, it's going to be in touch, in contact on the entire surface. And what about the, um, all this damage usually is a result of chloride incursion coming down through the chloride or mag chloride mm -hmm. or something coming down through the mm -hmm. joint. So do you just trap all that in there or do you remove it? For the, uh, for the damage portion, you mean? Yeah. So uh, this repair, in this repair, you essentially don't need that damage portion anymore. You can just take it, imagine it's gone. Even if, uh, it's, it's not gonna happen, but even if con uh, corrosion continues on the damage portion, you're not relying on the capacity of that, that portion of the beam. 
So, and Ultra High Performance Concrete, they have done extensive testing and it is ex extremely durable. So it's gonna be like a permanent coating for, for the um, substrate steels, for the, for the silene side. In, in the case of, um, of uh, concrete where you have rebar, the, when the rebar converts to corrosive matter, it expands 10 times its volume. So if the beam continues to corrode uh, due to incursion from the top, or maybe even some of the materials that were introduced into it by the concrete that you're, you're applying in and of itself, is there a risk of it expanding and, and causing the, 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 the fix to crack? This type of concrete is not corrosive to steel, so there is no concern about like the concrete itself actually cause uh, corrosion to steel. But the expansion uh, is a very interesting question. We have studs actually that they are holding those panels uh, and they're connecting that to the intact portion of the web and also flange. So they are gonna continue holding that panel in place. So actually late, recently I was thinking about that, what if we have that force that like tries to expand that thing, but we have those studs that they care. If they, if they were like loose panels, chances are, yeah, if that corrosion continues, they will fall off, but we have studs that they've prevent that. And by the way, we are talking about the bridge that it has holes in it. And uh, when it comes to repair, sometimes we expect too much. So uh, we're not talking about like making that bridge better than day one. So uh, this bridge was standing with holes in it. So what we are doing, we are essentially providing a, uh, an alternative load path. Okay. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.